Homosexuality The Bible generally teaches against any sexual relations except between husband and wife. The Bible specifically mentions sexual intercourse between persons of the same sex as among the forbidden acts. Prejudice, fears, and misconceptions about homosexuality are deeply rooted in our culture. The subject evokes strong emotions which may hinder understanding it from the biblical perspective. Many common beliefs and attitudes about homosexuality actually have their origins in our cultural traditions rather than in the Bible. The Bible prohibits homosexual intercourse. One of the major sins. Though the word homosexual it was not mentioned by Jesus, or in the Ten Commandments. And although there are relatively few references in the Bible, nonetheless condemnations of homosexual conduct are explicit. When read in context, a majority of the Bible passages refer to specific homosexual practices which violate other important Bible prohibitions such as idolatry, rape, prostitution, or pederasty. But strongly, homosexual behavior is prohibited in scripture and was a major cause of the divine judgment against Sodom and Gomorrah. The Apostle Paul listed homosexuals among the unrighteous who would not inherit the kingdom of God, and declared that God's wrath stands against such behavior, whether practiced by men or women. Can a person really be born with a gay gene? How does God feel about homosexuals? In this 10th episode, BHN Ministries will illustrate that the spiritual demonic attacks, influence, and lies behind this strong sin, and display its definition on the Word of God. So sit back and relax, and open your hearts, minds, and spirits, to receive, and be influenced, by the Word of God. BHN Ministries brings to you homosexuality the homosexuals and lesbians have gained considerable political and social momentum in America they have come out as the term goes left their closets and are knocking on the doors of your homes through TV radio newspapers and magazines they are preaching their doctrine of tolerance equality justice and love they do not want to be perceived as abnormal or dangerous they want acceptance and they want you to welcome them with open and loving arms approving of what they do in numerous states in america several bills have been introduced by the pro-homosexual politicians to ensure that the practice of homosexuality is a right protected by law Included in these bills are statements affecting employers, renters, and schools. Churches could possibly be required to hire a quota of homosexuals, and sensitivity training courses would be strongly urged in various workplaces. There is even legislation that would force the state to pick up the tab for the defense of homosexual agendas in lawsuits while requiring the non-homosexual side to pay out of his or her pocket. Is this fair? Of course not. But fairness isn't the real issue here. It is social engineering. Think about it, the homosexual community wants legal protection for having intercourse with people of the same sex. And, if that weren't enough, it wants its views taught in schools, promoted over the airwaves, and codified in literature. The Christian Church however, has not stood idly by. When it has spoken out against this political immorality, the cry of separation of church and state is shouted at the so-called religious bigots. But when the homosexual community attempts to use political power to try to control the church and get its agenda taught in schools, no such cry of bigotry is heard from the sacred halls of the media. Why? Because it isn't politically correct to side with Christians. But let's take a look into the Bible. God's Word, which reveals God's moral character, and it shapes the morality of the Christian. The Bible has much to say about homosexuality, Leviticus, 
chapter 18, verse 22. You shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female, it is an abomination. 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 13. If there is a man who lies with a male, as those who lie with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood guiltness is upon them. With such clear statements against homosexuality, it is difficult to see how different groups can say the Bible supports homosexuality. But they try by redefining love, marriage, sex, homosexuality, and so on, in order to accomplish their goal. The truth is that God created man and woman, not man and man or woman and woman. Nevertheless, the Bible is a powerful book, and because of that, the homosexuals often try to make the Bible agree with their agenda. But it doesn't work. The Bible does not support homosexuality as we have seen from the scriptures. Unlike other sins, this sexual sin has a judgment administered by God himself, he gives them over to their passions Romans. Chapter 1 verse 26 through 28. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting. This means that their hearts are allowed to be hardened by their sins. As a result, they can no longer see the error of what they are doing. Without an awareness of their sinfulness, there will be no repentance. Without repentance, there will be no forgiveness. Without forgiveness, there is no salvation. In this politically correct climate that relinquishes morality to the relativistic whims of society and stating that homosexuals should not marry is becoming unpopular. Should a woman be allowed to marry another woman? Should a man be allowed to marry another man? Should they be given legal protection and special rights to practice their homosexuality? No, they should not. The Bible, of course, condemns homosexuality. It takes no leap of logic to discern that homosexual marriage is also condemned. But our society does not rely on the Bible for its moral truth. Instead, it relies on humanistic and relativistic morals upon which it builds its ethical structure. Homosexuality is not natural. Just look at the male and female bodies. They are obviously designed to couple. The natural design is apparent. It is not natural to couple male with male and female with female. It would be like trying to fit two screws together or two nuts together and then say, see? It's natural for them to go together. Homosexuals argue that homosexuality is natural since it occurs in the animal world. But this is problematic. It is true that this behavior occurs in the animal kingdom. But it is also true that we see animals eating their prey alive and even their young. We see savagery, cruelty, and extreme brutality. Yet, we do not condone such behavior in our own society. Proponents of the natural order argument should not pick and choose the situations that best fit their agendas. They should be consistent and not compare us to animals. We are not animals. We are made in God's image. Just because someone is a homosexual does not mean that we cannot love him, or her, or pray for him, or her. Homosexuality is a sin, and like any other sin, it needs to be dealt with in the only way possible. It needs to be laid at the cross and repented of. 
Christians should pray for the salvation of the homosexual the same way they would any other person in sin. They should treat homosexuals with the same dignity as they would anyone else because, like it or not, they are made in the image of God. However, this does not mean that Christians should approve of their sin. Not at all. Christians should not compromise their witness for a politically correct opinion that is shaped by guilt and fear. In fact, the following verses should be kept in mind when dealing with homosexuals. Colossians. Chapter 4. Verse 5 and 6. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned, as it were, with salt, so that you may know how you should respond to each person. You do not win people to the Lord by condemning them and calling them names. This is why God says to speak with wisdom, grace, and love. Let the love of Christ flow through you so that the homosexuals can see true love and turn to Christ instead of away from him. The only hope for the homosexual and all people who break God's laws is to realize that God is holy and he will rightfully judge all who have sinned against him by breaking his law. If he did not do this, then he would be approving of wrongdoing. However, God is loving and patient, wanting people to repent and come a saving knowledge of him, so they might be redeemed. What this means is that the sinner must turn to Christ, who is God the Son in flesh who bore our sins in his body on the cross, died, and rose from the dead and made it possible for sinners to be saved from the righteous judgment of God by faith in what Jesus did on our behalf, and be forgiven of their sins. This is done receiving Christ, by believing in him and his sacrifice that is a payment for our sins to God the Father. Like any sinner, the homosexual needs to repent, receive Christ by faith, and be saved from God's righteous judgment by trusting in Christ and the judgment that fell upon him on the cross. They need to pray and ask the Lord Jesus to save them. Romans. Chapter 1. Verses 21 through 25. Because, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, in the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. We see in these verses that both sexual perversion and idolatrous religion have their roots in the rebellion of the creation against the Creator. As soon as man turned his back on his Creator, he began a perverted love affair with the creation. This spiritual perversion began to manifest in the natural, as sexual perversion. Man's rebellion against God resulted in an arrested development that can be seen in both spiritual and sexual manifestation. It is for this reason that there is such a strong affinity between homosexuality and the spirit of religion and why the churches are filled with homosexuals in need of a message and an anointing that will deliver them. Let us examine the relationship between spiritual and sexual perversion. Could people who honestly believe they are gay, possibly be blinded by a demonic spirit of homosexuality? Or could they possibly have a demon of homosexuality in them? And that's not to say that all are demon-possessed, but what is it that makes them truly, honestly believe that they are born this way? Well, to plainly put, homosexuality is actually a demon. It is a demon of homosexuality which turns people from being straight to bisexual or gay. The Church of Jesus Christ must start to learn through revelations from God that this is actually being done to people by evil spirits. This demon assaults the person with thoughts, imaginations and feelings leading this person to change their sexual lifestyle. This is an outright direct attack from Satan against God's creation. Against God's highest creation, we men and women of earth. 
Some people say that people are gay because they have a gay gene in them. Well, you have been lied to. That is absolutely not true. The gay gene is a myth. It is a lie. From Satan, who uses his medical professionals throughout the world to spread this lie to the general population. You might say, people are gay because they have chemical imbalances. Well, that too, is another lie from the pit of hell. Or you might be thinking, people choose to turn gay. Well, that answer is partially true. The demonic demon who is in charge of homosexuality pushes men and women, boys and girls and compels them to turn gay. The demon does this by flooding the man or woman with gay thoughts, gay feelings, gay dreams, gay imaginations in their mind and compels them supernaturally pushing on them these gay thoughts and feelings. So as a demon pushes and compels a man or woman to turn gay, that person can many times choose to say yes or no. What level they can choose to say yes or no would depend on how much grace from God they are getting at the time for this terrible temptation. If you are questioning if demons have this power, the answer to that is, yes, they do, and much much more. I am not saying that person always has a choice, sometimes the demonic enemies overpower a person and force them to gay. To some of you reading this, you might be quite surprised that this even happens, but it is the truth, it does. Does God allow this? Yes. Sometimes. There has been no gay gene ever found. It is all a lie and they will never find one. While scientists all over the world try to search out medical reasons why people turn gay, the demons are laughing and mocking all of them for such silliness. You might be thinking, can people be born gay like the world is telling us? The only way a baby can be born gay is if a demon of homosexuality is in that baby when it is born. Can a demon be in a baby when it is born? It is very very possible, especially if the parents are into all kinds of terrible sinning, rebellion and occult type behavior, especially occult type behavior of the sexual type. God created men and women to marry each other, to become one during sexual intimacy. This is one of the most incredible blessings in all of the earth. So of course Satan will attack this. Of course Satan will try to twist this. Of course Satan will try to turn the whole thing backwards. When Satan turns a person gay through his demonic army, that is a great temporary victory for him. When the demons can turn a person gay, they now laugh at this person day and night mocking this poor man or woman, boy or girl. The demons are going to the lake of fire soon, and they know there is no way out of this judgment. So in their twisted minds, when they can harm a man or woman in such a way as changing their sexuality, this would be a sick attack that they use against us because of their spite. Because they are going to eternal suffering they want to harm God's creation doing as much damage as possible to it before they enter the lake of fire for eternity. They laugh and laugh and laugh at the gay person they are tormenting because to them in their twisted minds, they think this is a great way to attack God back without actually attacking God personally. The demons hate God, they hate Jesus, they hate all mankind and the animals too. The demons cannot attack God. They cannot attack Jesus. But they can attack us. They can attack God's creation. Do you understand that turning a person gay is a huge huge victory for the demonic realm? At least in their twisted minds they think it is a great victory. How sad that super powerful entities such as evil angels get pleasure in our suffering. So as they push and compel that person to watch gay porn, to practice gay activities they are laughing and laughing and laughing. Satan who is ruling the world will tell you through his doctors and scientists that people turn gay for lots of various reasons. So we will have commercials on TV, or articles in magazines, or lots of books written and published trying to explain why people are turned gay. And the truth is, all of that is not true. Satan does not want you to know the real reason why people are turned gay all over the world. 
On this topic, he prefers to fight against us in secret, in the shadows, using misdirection. Meanwhile, we have millions of people throughout the world who are living a gay lifestyle. We will prove it to you now with the grace of God that when a person is turned gay, it is a demon. Let's prove this once and for all. Have you ever known a person before and after they turn gay? Did you notice how after they turn gay most of the time their voice completely changes? If you focus, you will notice this a thousand times over. That is right, the voice literally changes. The demon literally changes the person's voice to be more masculine or feminine sounding depending on the twisting nature of the attack. The demons of homosexuality will then try to change how the man or woman walks. If you have known a man before and after he was turned gay, you will see how he walks differently now. Many of the gay men in the USA are pushed and compelled by the demon to start walking much more femininely. They even over exaggerate their feminine walk now. These are the demons tormenting the poor individual. Quite often you will see a gay man walking down the street over exaggerating, moving his hips as he walks. This is the demon inside of the person pushing a silly feminine type of walk in the man. The demon of homosexuality will change how the man or woman uses their arms and hands. If you have known a man or woman before and after they have turned gay, you will notice how they move their arms and hands differently now. Gay men will many times fling their arms or wrists up in feminine positions now which men in the USA would normally never ever do. Now that a person has turned gay, it is extremely likely that men will start wearing earrings and dressing either much more feminine, or much more masculine depending on the demonic twisting being done to their heart and mind. It is very common at gay clubs or out in gay cities for the men to be wearing bondage type clothing. That is leather clothing, that is used when doing sexual bondage type acts. As you study world history, just about every time, or even every time a empire starts to get a large population of gay people, that civilization is usually destroyed. Or if the empire is not completely destroyed, it is usually taken down as a powerhouse and turned into rubble to really never be heard much from again. Perfect example, the Greeks and Romans. Homosexuality is 100% a spiritual attack by the evil flesh inside of us, our sinful carnal nature and by demonic spirits that hate us, they hate you, they hate me. This problem can only be solved spiritually. There is no other way to tackle this spiritual attack except by fighting back spiritually. The homosexual is still made in the image of God. Even though he, or she, is in rebellion. Therefore, we, Christians, should show homosexuals the same dignity as anyone else with whom we come in contact. Don't injure them. Don't hate them. Don't judge them. Inform them that freedom and forgiveness are found in Jesus. Let them know that God loves us and died for us, so that we might be delivered from the consequences of our sin. But, this does not mean that you are to approve of what they do. Don't compromise your witness for a socially acceptable opinion that is void of rationality, godliness, and biblical truth. Instead, stand firm in the word that God has revealed and patiently love him, or her, biblically, and pray for their salvation. Be kind to them. Be loving. And, when appropriate, tell them the gospel. This concludes our tenth episode. Finally, we need to take a stand against it so that we might promote the righteousness of God and inform sinners of the need to repent. If you are a homosexual, please understand that we do not hate you, nor do we judge you. Sin is sin, and the forgiveness of our sins is found in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.